I'm Brenton Lloyd Richard. Austin James Brown. And we are the drunk ship of Lanterns. Um, it's, it's, it's the song off one of our favourite records, The Last in the Canatorium by the great Mars Volta. Um, and yeah, we just draw inspiration off them a lot as far as, you know, them pushing artistic boundaries and, and making music that's still audible, yeah. So we probably hold them in very high esteem as being probably our favourite band and yeah, that's where the name derives from. My journey into music, I mean, as far as consuming music from, from an extremely early age, you know what I mean? That my, all my parents' favourite music, all their favourite records, I can recall from a really early age, very, very 80s stuff and 90s, early 90s stuff, stuff like, you know, Simply Red, Phil Collins, all the, those 80s powerhouse acts, um, Michael Jackson, of course, we um, both uh, have a pretty unhealthy fixation with him. Um, to a lot of early 90s stuff like Soul to Soul, M People, I had a pretty steady staple diet of that sort of stuff, Stereo MCs, all that sort of stuff. My parents were were really, really consuming a lot of when I was growing up and yeah, and I recall that from a really early age, maybe as young as three, I recall, you know, listening to that sort of stuff. Mine's similar to Austin's, it all started with my parents' music, my mum and dad aren't musicians but like just huge fans of music. Um, Mum was big on the disco, Dad was big on his Aussie rock and shit like that and yeah it started with their records and I listened to nothing pretty much except Michael Jackson and my parents music till I was about 12 years old. And then started getting into hip hop through my sister um, and then I started playing the drums when I was like 15 and I did that for a really long time and then couldn't find anyone to jam with so I had like an 8 track recorder. So I started to fuck around with beats and with a little Casio keyboard and then it just sort of spiralled out of control from there and just got more and more and then Austin gave me heaps of mad pirated shit and then got Ableton and tons of plugins that we didn't pay for and that was sick and then we started making music um, and then when I finished studying graphic design I went round to his house and said let's start a fucking band. Gary, Indiana is the city where Michael Jackson was born and because we're both like die-hard Michael fans, we decided to go with that and sort of now acts as like an alter ego kind of thing. But it's a city, yeah, Gary, Indiana. Yeah, when we, when we work together, we work under Gary, Indiana and the Drunk Ship of Lanterns is essentially our record label. The main reason we've got the Stooge is because we need a creative space to work and whilst we've like grown up on the coast and it's beautiful, we don't really like it at all. We kind of fucking hate it. But So this place acts as our own little cave away from it, away from the coast, so you can be pretty much anywhere when all the doors are shut and the blinds are shut and you're making beats. And it's essentially, it's an old house, it's a shitty old house that we've just turned into a studio. We've got a mic room set up, a mix room, and we've decorated it with basically all of our favourite artists so it doesn't feel like a sterile house and there's a bit of inspiration on the wall, held together by heaps of blue tack. Um, the biggest obstacles I would face as a musician at the moment would be cash because I have to work and if I didn't have to work I could spend more time on music so like that's a huge thing. Not that I give a shit about cash but obviously I need it to live so it takes me away from here. Um, and musically I think trying to find what feels good, trying to find what I like and something that I'm passionate about to spend heaps of time on. So yeah, I think it would be just me, my own, my own creative inspiration. Once I've got that, I'm okay. And if I had cash, I wouldn't have to do anything else. I could just see that idea out. But yeah, yeah pro probably something very similar. Negotiating life and all that amongst this is, you know, and the mundaneness of having to work jobs and things like that is it you know it deviates your attention away from where you really want to want to have it and and um 
trying to make something that, that pleases people, but at the same time, not compromising what you do is, is one of the biggest challenges as, as musicians, because it's an art form that's made to be shared. You know, you want people to hear it. And, and ideally, you'd like people to enjoy it. But at the same time, you don't want to just do what everyone else does. You don't want to compromise what you do as an artist. And, and that delicate balance is what I find as one of the more challenging things as a musician. Yeah. Volume of work, yeah. for the most part, with the regards to the yeah, artistic challenges of being a muso, yeah, it's just keep learn writing. by doing. You know what I mean? Keep uh, writing and keep writing and keep. And you writing. refine your skill. The more you do it, yeah, it's like anything, man. The more you do something, practice, practice is perfect, well. sort of thing. You know, yeah. staying inspired. I think yeah, big deal. It's a huge Absolutely. thing because you can lose that, and when you lose that, it's fucked. And at that point, you got to. I think, like, what I do is I tend to take a moment and get away from it. And I'll probably either I'll listen to music or I'll get into film, visual arts, anything that just gets you inspired to get going. Again. Which again is is part of the challenge of, of coming from where we're from and maintaining that inspiration and, and motivation and belief to to persevere with it. You know what I mean? Coming from the Central Coast, it's it's hard to maintain that we're not we're not dumped in the middle of Melbourne, you know, the cultural hub of this country. We're not in Sydney. We don't have too many other artists to feed off, you know what I mean? And other, we, all we've got is, is what we have here, which is again one of the main reasons we set up. I tend to find like for I don't find that what I've been through Articul gets articulated in my music, but I think the music I write and the reason I like it comes from getting away from that. So like for me, all the shit in my life, when I know I've written a good track is when I've stopped thinking about that. So when I'm sitting there and I'm composing, I'm no longer thinking about all the shit in my life. That's when I know I've got something good because then it's just grabbed me emotionally and it's gone beyond the point of thought. So for me, it doesn't directly end up in the song, but my want to get away from all that other shit I think ends up driving the music hugely because it makes it makes the emotion the most important thing and then when the emotion shuts down my brain that's when I know I'm doing good work. Yeah for me particularly I um I don't feel like bro I said I don't feel what I'm going through all my experiences you know particularly manifest in particular songs that I write. But it's just my history of, of depression, mental illness, drug addiction, things like that. I hit a pretty pretty low point in my life, I guess, and music was the only thing that made me feel anything, you know what I mean? When you, you're on rock bottom and you're sort of at a wit's end and you've thrown your hands up in the air and don't care about anything anymore, but still, when I hear that song, I feel something. When I made that track, I still feel something. It was sort of the last stronghold I had to sort of get myself better in a, long way. In a lot of ways. It's as dramatic as it sounds, yeah. It was, there was a point in my life there where it was the only time I felt anything. So, so yeah, I sort of got to hold on to that and I've run with it ever since. And I've rearranged everything my life, in my life around that based on those feelings, for sure. Okay, real music made by real people, I guess, you know, it doesn't get any more independent than this, man, you know, um, there's no adulterants in this whatsoever, you know. We use, off, off our own volition, we create everything, we create the space, we create the studio, you know what I mean, we're 100% self-sufficient and we make real music, it's pretty much all I can say. Brenton? Yeah, that's it. If you want more info, junkship.com. SoundCloud, Facebook, Instagram, all the usual social networking shit, you can find us on it. <laughs> <laughs>